my name is Jessica Jett of Trimungus Productions. It's my husband, Mark, also of Trimungus. Hey, everyone. Are here to interview uh, Nigel from No Matter Productions about a couple of recent projects that we've worked on together, as well as some, you know, just general behind the scenes and like backstory about how we got started uh, in uh, filmmaking. So that hopefully folks out there uh, will also be somewhat inspired or at least feel like you're not alone if you're giving it a shot running into challenges along the way because it's not super easy but uh hope you all enjoy so thanks for joining us so today we're going to talk more about uh no matter productions and then uh, dig deep into some behind the scenes talk around the, the, the most recent uh microfilm that came out um i guess three week tomorrow right a week ago tomorrow and it came out we released it last week in January, sure. and we started working on it in August of 23. And um, the thing is only like three and a half minutes, but um, that's the nature of this work, especially when you do it for the, love of the, for the love of the game, where it's like you have other things going on in life because you're not getting paid for what you're doing. Sometimes what you want to do gets put on the back burner. Yeah. So there was times last year where the uninvited was just sitting on the shelf for a little bit until this got done or this got done and then it was like all right we're going to release it now and two it was like our true first collaboration with trimungus and no matter to where we had to figure out our workflow yeah. to how things were going to be done and it was like okay you're going to do the sound design and then it was like oh okay watching jess and her ideas and it was like, oh, yes, you surpassed me in color grading. Like, <laughs> like, take this over, do what you want with it. And um, for me personally, it was a, a learning experience because I went to school for what I do. And most of the time, I was doing everything. This time, I had to learn how to delegate to other people. So it was like, I'm working on it, but I'm not working on it because I'm waiting for things to come in, people to email me mock-ups, and I'm like, all right, let's try this this way, let's try this that way, and so it was like, it was a new thing for me where I could rely on other people, and I had to learn how to, like, do nothing, essentially. <laughs> like, Well, it's your baby, right? You wrote yeah. it, you directed it, you mm -hmm. starred in it, you know, it was your idea, your vision, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard to, I think we're like sometimes let go of that control mm -hmm. right because you know that well if i do every piece of this you know from the from the pre-production and then hands on the production and all the post-production i know it's going to meet to my vision right you don't have to worry about because it's only you that you're letting down or it's only you that you know you, it's going to get in your own way whereas you're not having to rely on other people and we, we've learned that too i mean i think that part of our journey and growth in this was having roles like defining roles i think uh, we were talking earlier off camera about the strengths of the production from a couple of weeks ago was because I think the roles were well defined. Right. We all came into it knowing, okay, Nigel, you're our director of photography, so we were going to respect, you know, that in your lane, that's your expertise and that's what you're bringing. And Jessica being the VFX supervisor for that, me being the director, and then also being one of the talent uh, for that and being able to focus on what I got to do as being in front of the camera, which is as we've learned in the past, when you have to do all those things, it's things suffer because. Mm -hmm. You, there's only so much attention and detail you can give to one particular thing when you got to do that by six times or 12 times or whatever. Yeah. How many roles are you you're trying to, how many hats you're trying to wear in one, in one production, it, something ultimately suffers. So yeah. I think to your point, you know, realizing that, you, you know, you can delegate and we've got, you've got folks that are rallying around you and say, hey, we, we, we want to be a part of your vision. We want to help you bring that vision to, to life. And, and it's a way to recognize the strengths that other people have, right? Mm -hmm. There are certain skills and talents that, you know, one person's not going to be the best at every little thing. So being able to utilize those uh, skills and talents that maybe someone else has more of than you in different areas uh, just makes what you could build even better, potentially. Yeah, because what we do is a collaborative art, you know, it can't all be one person doing everything. It can't be all one vision because what we do, other people have to come in and put their 
little two cents into it and i think the projects come out for the better because of that like someone emailed well not emailed me they messaged me about how they thought it was cool that i had the mist go around the character and it was cool to see and i was like well i can't take credit for that that was the idea that jess came up with and when she did it i was like oh yeah we're gonna do that like we needed an, under, an otherworldly element to the character and when she did that, I was like, oh, that's what we're going to do. Like, just keep doing that. And that's what inspired me to do the intro with the uh, lettering disappearing was the mist that yeah, you did. That was really cool. And that's something I wouldn't have came up with on my own if I was doing everything myself. And then with Mark, with his music, I had a whole different idea what the music was going to be. Mm. And I was like, oh, I kind of want it this way. And then you did something, but I was like, what? we're going in that direction <laughs> i was like just start the music here and then it'll be perfect like so that's like an example of like people bringing something to the table now none of that would happen if i was doing everything by myself sure you know sure. so and even if you came on board i'm like no nah, no nah, i got it still want to happen so right. you got to be receptive to right. what people bring to the table and and that was all based on what you told me so it all comes kind of full circle right mm -hmm. so the way you described how you wanted that figure to appear and the feeling that you wanted it to evoke is you know kind of what drove me to that particular treatment and i figured well I'll, you know at the risk of you know overstepping since you're just looking for coloring i was like well let me see what i can do just as a thing as he said and figured worst case it's easy to just remove right so it was just right. one of those things that i wanted to see if i could you know kind of do what i was thinking and i and i was able to do it so just wanted to point out like it was based on right yeah. the story so that i really like how that demonstrates the 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 way the ideas just feed off each other. You touched on your origin story a little bit, so I'd like to dig into that a little bit. When I finally decided I wanted to do some, I was acting, and uh, I was doing an acting minor in college, and then I stumbled upon that Amazon Prime thing. And uh, once I started messing with editing a little bit, I, uh, I was like, you know, one year, I was like, you know what, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do like a, a martial arts film you know and at the time it was like i want to say 2014 captain america winter soldier just came out and i was like uh, i want to do something like this like i, I kept re-watching that fight scene and so i wrote a little script uh, it was like 19 pages and at the time i didn't know how to write a screenplay so it looks like a play the script because i was an actor i was doing stage acting i only knew how to write plays so i did that and i got a bunch of my friends together we shot something and then everybody bailed at the end so i had to do everything myself post-production wise so i had to find out how to edit and do music and edit a fight scene and do all this stuff at the same time that I was doing it, which is why it took a year to finish this thing. And first of all, when you're first starting out, people don't do a 20 minute short film because it's like, it's a nightmare <laughs> of a production. So yeah, that was, that was crazy. I remember dropping that 2015, like November, 2015, dropping that in. It was garbage, man. It was, it was horrible. But the fight scenes were amazing at the time. And the uh, the uh, trailers were great. I love, I still to this day, I like doing trailers. Um, but um, the film itself, bad. And that was one of the catalysts that taught me that, hey, I should probably go to school for this. And uh, when I met my wife and she encouraged me to pursue it, that's when I went to film school. And I remember my first class was an audio class. And I watched my teacher recreate a scene from the Shawshank Redemption out of royalty-free sound effects. And um, a student 
did the voiceover, the, the Morgan Freeman voiceover, and he, I watched him in Logic Pro put everything together, and it was, it blew my mind. I was like, yeah. I'm doing this, man. So let's talk more about The Uninvited. So if you haven't seen it, it's a it's a microfilm. Uh, it's produced, written, directed by Nigel from No Matter Productions um, that we helped help support. Uh, it's on his YouTube channel and on his website. Um, tell us a little bit more about the inspiration for the story. What, what, what how did it come about? So The Uninvited is actually uh, an idea from like a night terror a reoccurring night terror I used to have since I was a kid. And um, it was really supposed to be a successor to one of my microfilms called Lucid, which was also based on a night terror I used to have as a kid. And the working title for The Undivided was Lucid too. Right. And then I was like, oh, I don't really know. I don't really like that. Like, let's, let's find a, a new title. And I text you guys, what can be a better title? But um, yeah, so it was like, based on a night terror and um, I was like, let's put this on screen. How can we do this to um, let the audience feel? And I was like, really, this is gonna come down to the the look and the, the sound of it. Because with Lucid, I, I had to do basically everything. Uh, it was really just me and Will and I edited everything together. And um, it was really something that was, I wasn't really capable of like it came out pretty good but the music I was using you know music off of a site and I was mixing it together and I'm like oh, this is a lot more work than I um, anticipated so with the uninvited um, this was after I was like I met you guys and I realized what talent you have and I'm like oh yeah this could work as a as a joint venture to uh, bring this out, because how do you convey like, um, how do you convey like a sort of like dream suff suffocation or something like like feeling trapped, you know? Like once I heard the sound of the breathing and the the cadence of it, and I was like, oh, this makes me feel like how I was when I was dreaming. Like I could feel the hair in the back of my neck coming up. So I was like, once. I could really feel that same kind of airiness to it. I was like, I know we got something with that, you know. What do you want, man? What are you doing here? You don't have to be here. Just get out of here. Just, just get out of here. So we just did BB's brownies, right? Right. How was that? for you seeing something, because now you have a lot more knowledge than you used to. Sure, yeah, well, it's, yeah. So how was that process of like, from beginning of an idea to actually directing it yourself? Um, it was it was good. I mean, again, I, I've been humbled, uh, very much so this last year, with understanding, again, that the amount of work that goes behind the scenes to get to to rolling a camera, right? It's starting the actual production, and then the night time about any of the post-production work. So, which again was what's, what is motivating for us to do this because I think it's important for folks who aren't working on these types of projects and things to understand how much work, how much effort. I mean, overall, I thought it was a great experience. I mean, even going all the way through the shoot, like it wasn't stressful. And I think part of that why it wasn't stressful was because it was organized, because we came into it with a plan. We mm -hmm. came into it with a team of people that had a, had clearly defined roles, responsibilities, and everyone executed. Like, and we did it. Yeah, it went long, a couple hours longer than I thought. <laughs> Me being overly optimistic, oh, we'll get this done in about four hours. And I was like, <laughs> nope. Uh, you know, and, and I think right after we shot the first scene, and we, we felt like an hour, hour and a half on that, like this was supposed to be a 30 second scene and it took us almost two hours. All right, this is not gonna wrap up at 10 o'clock. But I, I kind of want to add in here though, part of it, like for the most part, the group of people knew each other, mm. right? We're shooting inside a home. <laughs> so there's already like an atmosphere there, right? Of just people getting along and, you know, so things I think felt a little loose and that's to the credit of all the planning, right? Because, right. I mean, 
gosh, hearing you say that you weren't stressed as we were going through the shooting, like that's 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 amazing. No, I mean the only thing that was uh, that, were, that I was concerned about was the clock. It's like <laughs> once we got past ten o'clock in the evening, I'm like, all right. I thought we'd be done by now, and I'm, you know, in my head I'm like, we well, still got like 30 shots to do, and I'm like, <laughs> boy, we're gonna have to, you know, keep this, keep this moving along. And everyone, but everyone's temperament was good. Like no one seemed like they were having a bad time or being upset or frustrated. I mean, I know one of our uh, uh, folks on the on the sound, he was, you know, struggling a little bit, but he, again, he hung in there. He, he, he all the way up until the end. So, but outside of that, like compared to some of our earlier productions before we became officially became a company that those were some of the there's some very stressful days there were some very like you know like when we were like circling the drain kind of days like we were upset and just like you know like and and uh you know not and uncertain like what what, what we we're gonna do i mean i think back to you know weird john's was almost completely lost like and it's like the fact that we even were able to establish what we did uh you know and again part was we, did, we weren't as organized. We didn't have the yeah. plan. We didn't, yeah. we didn't have the roles defined. We didn't have, you know, clear identify, okay, you know, it's 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 night and day, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I forget which DP I heard. There was an interview that I saw over the summer for, for some behind, I think it may have been the DP from The Joker talking about, he basically said something along the lines like, the, the detail, the attention to the detail in the organization is what actually gives the room for that creativity, which I, for, for whatever reason, it was like, I, I thought it was the opposite. Mm. I thought, well, being, you know, tied to a script and being tied to every little detail was stripping out the creativity because I was like the freewheeling, hey, let's just put up some cameras and go. But man, what a difference it, it makes, right, in the production. Like, uh, it really does. And, I, and I'm confident when we finish BB's Brownies that it's going to be, you know, it's the next iter of you know, level of showing what we can do from production value and with that kind of planning and, and execution, right? And again, it took us almost two months to go from idea to the shoot and it'd probably be another two months before we're done, right? It's just, that's just the nature of the work. And I think folks need to understand that, you know, yeah. these things don't happen overnight. It's not, yeah, it may, it may have been a three minute short or four minute short, but, but the amount of hours that you put into it behind the scenes. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But with the creativity, you got to think of it like a tree. You know, a tree is a stump, and then you can branch out. Yep. You know, you, you don't see it the other way around where the branches are on the bottom and the stump is at the top. It has a foundation. It has the roots, yep. you know, just like a house. You can't build a house without building the foundation. After you build the foundation, then you can put up the walls, or you can put up the decorations and be creative with that, but yeah. with the floor plan and stuff, but you, you gotta have the foundation. And I think people underestimate the, you know, the details and the creativity comes from that organization. As an editor, as a director, as a whatever, you gotta be organized. You gotta know where that thing is, where that thing is, where that scene is, where that file is, you gotta be Organize. If I hand off a project to you, if I hand off the files, you got to know where everything is. You got to know where the audio is, the sound effects, you know, the, the videos, what day that was shot and everything. Like, people underestimate the depth and the details. You know? I just want to say to anybody out there who wants to try to do this, I just want to say there's never, it's never too late to redefine what you want to do. Nope. You know, and, um, if you want to start this, the best way to start this is through micro filming. You know, like a few years ago, if you could have told me that you could do a whole cohesive story in like a minute, I would have said you're crazy, you know, but you actually can tell, I would say, I would call it micro storytelling. Mm -hmm. You can tell a cohesive story and even 30 seconds, you know, like you said, there's 30 second commercials. You know, 30 seconds to five minutes, you know, uh, challenge yourself to condense it to that time frame and just tell stories, try different things, t try different genres, try different um, camera angles, try different shooting styles. You know, um, when I was in my one of my classes was creative writing, they would teach you to write a story in this author's style or this author's style, you know? Um, I've even um, been in uh, music classes where they said, you know, do a song in 
and uh, this artist style and this artist style it's it's a way to learn how to find what your own style by diving into different you know styles and seeing how other people do their things and it will help you find what you like to do so I would say try micro filmmaking to not only find your style but find what role you like to do if you like to do one role if you like to do many roles whether it's directing whether it's writing whether it's video editing you know whether it's visual effects audio sound you know micro filmmaking is a great way to hone your skills and to find what skills you have and find what skills you lack and how to expand your your repertoire yeah. so to speak you know so i would say anybody who wants to do what we do just start with what you have start with what you know and then grow through micro filming all right so we'll leave you all there uh, thanks for joining us you know uh you can check us out on our socials i'm sure we'll link things wherever in the screen uh uninvited out now on No Matter Productions website as well as their YouTube channel. Um, you know, and we're all on social media. So if you like, you know, I like what we're doing and you got questions, find us. You can find us. Pretty easy to go to either one of our websites and contact us because we're just an email away. So you know, I'm always happy to answer questions and as I wish we're networking and learning and working with more people. That's what it's all about. So all right, well, that's it. I'm Mark Richamungus. I'm Jessica. Nigel. Um, Nigel, uh, be creative, my nomads, please. <laughs> That's a wrap. Thank you. All right.